then also, I know that you came to be known for your sales pitch, right? And that became sort of what you were coined for in the industry. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your pitch was when training either yourself initially or when training your salespeople to go into the store, put it in their hand? I know you have a sort of routine you used to do. Do you mind sharing that routine? Sure, no, no. The first thing is, it could not be a sales pitch. If you're selling somebody with a sales pitch, you're trying to create a sales. When you're trying to sell somebody something, instead of selling it to them, help them make the right decision and put yourself in the reorder business. For example, selling is all about, here is the feature of my product and here's how it's gonna benefit you. Make sure that those features and benefits are honest. Don't go lying to people. Don't exaggerate. Here's the feature of the product. Here's how it's going to benefit you. With our Paul Mitchell conditioner, because it was leave-in conditioner, I could put some in their hand, right? Now, once it went in their hand, they didn't know what to do with it. And I could finish explaining. We have two hands out like this, their hand and my yeah. hand. I could finish explaining, and they don't know what the world to do with this, right? But I have their full attention. I set a bottle down. They say, by the way, rub your hands together. It neutralizes all the chemicals in your body. Put it on your skin. It's very good for your skin. It's a leave-in conditioner. There's all these great things. So that was part of the technique. And then obviously the other part was, you want to help people make the right decision. Right. Often people will say to you, uh, no. They're not really saying no, they're saying I haven't been convinced. Mm, so it's very, it's very, very important in sales to realize this. In our case, we have every line in the world. Why do we want a new line that no one knows, okay? And for us, we would say, because this product saves you time and money. One shampoo instead of two, a leave-in conditioner opposed to one. You've got to spend 10 minutes in the back basin waiting and then rinsing it out of their hair. Saves you time and money. It's new and exciting. And I will come back, show you how to sell it. And for a period of one month, it's not the hottest product and you're not totally satisfied. I will take back every bottle you haven't used or sold out the door and give you your money back. Now, that's fair enough, isn't it? Right. And you would not just like that. Oh, yeah. And I would give them their money back. Yeah. I believe in our first two years, only one bottle came back. So when you first asked that, because I, I want to ask, when you first made that offer, was part of you kind of nervous? Like, oh, man, I hope they don't take it back. Or was it genuine confidence? It was genuine the confidence. There was no doubt in our minds. Our product is so good. If you use it as a hairdresser, you'll want to use it again and again and again. And we were right. Again, within the first two years, only one bottle came back. That's incredible. And then I know, too, that that's at the center of your ethos, right, of always having quality products. Same happens with uh, Patron. You guys went in and revolutionized an industry that before then a lot of people thought, oh, you can't go premium or it can't be done. And you, Sir John Paul, did it. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about why you think entrepreneurs typically don't do that or why, you know, what is it that entrepreneurs don't get about that? Because it seems so intuitive that you have the best products. Is it just cutting costs? I mean, what is it do you think that holds most entrepreneurs back from really putting out quality stuff in the market? It's a combination of several things. One, obviously, is the cost. And number two is your thinking, your mindset. If your mindset is to sell something to somebody, that's your business, that's your mindset. If your mindset is, I want to be in the reorder business. Mm. And if it's a one-time sale, I want it to be so good they're going to tell their friends about it. When you have that mindset, well, what's going to create a reorder? I like the product so much, I want to use it again. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to go the cheapest or the most expensive. It means you have to have the best or conceived as one of the best or something that satisfies their needs. It's like marketing is fulfilling a need in the marketplace, but in such a way that your sister, your brother, your best friend's gonna use that product and say, this is really good. I wanna go out of my way to order it again. Salons, how often do people go to salons? I think the average is once every Oh, gosh, uh, for those that go once every six weeks, something like that, you know, to get a haircut, get a trim. Right. Well, in between, do they want to make sure they have enough when they go back to get enough to last them the next visit? Got to be a good product for that. Yeah, no, that One that works. Sense. That's why Paul Mitchell, my gosh, you know, we're, uh, we'll be approaching next year uh, almost 40 years in business. Wow. And our original product, Shampoo One, Shampoo Two, and the conditioner, we still sell products are that good. And in my industry, every three or four years, you flip products over. Our products are that good that people say, I want to continue to use it. It's still the best. Still timeless. Wow. Okay. So as you're growing your business, because a lot of entrepreneurs watch the show, and I want to ask this for them. A lot of entrepreneurs will say, well, whoa, you built something that's just so intangible in my mind. 
Would you say that as you grow, as you scale your business, there was many times where you were like, man, I have no idea what I'm doing, right? And you sort of assume the role. I mean, how many times in your career growing as, you know, what people would see as a multi-billionaire who has it all together, how much of the time are you really just sort of figuring it out as you go, as opposed to knowing what you're doing every step of the way for people out there? I knew some of the stuff I was doing, but especially how to run and get involved in a company that did more than four $5 million a year, let alone to the hundreds of millions, billion, <laughs> uh, you know, the value of this company, my God, you learn along the way. I kept on learning and trying to do everything. After about nine years, I realized, man, I could only do so much. That's when I brought in people like Luke Jacobellis, who was far more experienced than I was in running warehouses, running inventories and things of that nature. And all of a sudden, then he had this responsibility. Another person was great at this and they had that responsibility. So you have to learn once you get pretty big, how to find the very best people better than you are. I say to management all the time, whether it's government management, independent management or corporate manager, when I lecture, always find somebody in your department or in your business that can do it better than you are and hire that person. <laughs> I tell my division heads here at, at all, all the companies I'm involved with, guys, even though you're full operations, you run the businesses for me, make sure this, that when you hire someone, that person you hire has the capability of being better than you. Now, what if they go on and you don't go on? You are one of my best managers. Any manager that has the brains to hire someone better than they are and has a better capability, that's the kind of person I want on board for the future. Mm, I love that. Now, let me ask you this. What's your process for decision-making? Obviously, a business is big whether it's hiring, building a culture, uh, choosing colors, logos, ads, marketing. You have to make lots of decisions all the time without all the pieces of information. Uh, what's been your rule of thumb or what have you learned after decades of making decisions? What is John Paul DeJoria's you know, system for effective decision making? Well, I'm very lucky now because with all my various companies, whether it's Patron, whether it's Paul Mitchell, uh, John Paul Pett, Rock Mobile, whatever, I have great managers, great presidents, great people that make some very, very good decisions. However, I'll commit it more of a creative end, a PR end, and say, hmm, here's my input on this, not on everything, but on some of the things. And I go by, how do I feel? You know, how does my spirit feel about it? How do I initially feel? My intuition. Yeah, you know, you know how do I feel exactly? Mm -hmm. You know, what's, what's my intuition on this one then? Does it make sense? And then from a consumer's point of view, if I was this person, how would I look at it? And all too often I'm saying, by the way, that eight and 10 point type make it bigger. <laughs> I want people to read it without their glasses on. Well, and that's squinting. what I'm like, oh no, JP's coming, you better increase that a little bit. Yeah. But I have really great people that do most of that big decision making. But for me is, what, what's that intuition? How do I feel about it? How do I think others will feel about it? Is it priced properly? And is it extremely great? And I will use just about every product on myself. Uh, whether it was Patron that I built over the years, how do I like the taste yeah, of this? Yeah, what yeah. I, but, you I'm know, working right now. Yeah, yeah. you know, we're, excuse me, <laughs> with Paul Mitchell. Other than, you know, obviously, not, I don't have a permanent wave, so there's a lot of products we have I don't use on me. John Paul Pet, I used every product on me. And wow. I don't have ticks, so yeah. their flea and tick shampoo probably <laughs> weren't pretty good for the dogs yeah. and cats. But I, I would use the products on me, too, to give them my opinion. Nice. How about on your way up when you didn't have managers in place and you had to make decisions? What was your system? Was it really just that intuition? Big my part system of it? was intuition and, uh-oh, who do I call to see what they would do? But it was mm -hmm. usually my intuition and uh, I was very lucky. Most of the time I was right, but many times I was wrong. That's very interesting that you, you say You learn from that. your mistakes. Yeah, that's true. And it's very interesting that you say that because a lot of people you know, who built big businesses will say that. Mm -hmm. Hey, I didn't know all the information. So anytime I hit a roadblock, it was a matter of who, not how. Right? Who can I find? How important do you find networking is or building a resources of people, a Rolodex of people who can help you, support you? How important is it to build your network? If I had that in the early days, it would have been great. I didn't have it in the early days. So most of, let's say, the first five years are just my intuition of what I thought would be right. And if I didn't have an answer, I would try something. And again, luckily, I was right most of the time. And there were times where I wasn't right. But it all <laughs> came out okay. Yeah. And then how about meditation? Was it ever something that was a part of your life or a, a routine of meditation or anything like that? I think the closest meditation for me is the majority of times I'll wake up in the morning, do what most people do, go to the bathroom, right. go right back to bed and just take a couple of minutes to be in the here and now. Now that's difficult because I'm not a regular meditator. Well, how do you be in the here and now? That's almost like a meditation where your mind is totally blank. Well, you could sit up in your room and just have your mind blank. Hard to do because things rush through your head. So what do I do? I look at the ceiling. Oh, that's the ceiling. Oh, that's the pain. That's the TV set. 
to just focus here. Then I focus on air going in me, air going out of me. As I do things like that, then all of a sudden, for a couple of minutes, I blank my mind out, period. Then I go about my day. You become more present, more tuned to the moment. Just for a matter of a couple of minutes is fine. And then you go right through.